Welcome back to another Langmuir Systems cutting tutorial. In the last video, we provided an overview of Mach 3, and in this video, we'll be going over jogging, setting offsets, importing a program, and running the program for the first time. First, let's uh, turn the power on to the machine by toggling the power switch on the electronics enclosure. Now before I get into jogging the machine, I first want to describe what each axis is. We have the y-axis, which is defined by the upper rail, and we have the x-axis, which is defined by the gantry tube. When we jog the machine in the y-axis, it means that the carriage is moving along the rail. When we jog the machine in the x-axis, it means the torch slide and its carriage are moving along the gantry tube. Now, positive Y is this direction, negative Y is this direction, positive X is this direction, and negative X is this direction. Uh, jogging is needed because every cutting program has an origin. Jogging is used to manually place the position of the torch to the origin of the program. Now many programs that you write may have the origin in the bottom left corner of the machine, but it also could have the origin really anywhere you decide to place it. For example, if you have a small part that you're going to cut out, uh, and you want to cut it out on a piece of material, let's say here, and the uh, origin, is in, origin is in the bottom right corner of the part, then you would jog the machine to the origin position and uh, set your offsets there. So jogging is what allows you to set offsets. On, in Mach 3, you'll notice that uh, with, with Mach 3 on the screen, if I hit the up arrow key, it will jog the machine in the positive direction. And if I hit the negative, or the down arrow key, it will uh, jog the machine in the negative Y direction. So if I hit down arrow key, it moves in negative Y. If I hit up arrow key, it moves in positive Y. Similarly, if I hit the right arrow key, it moves in positive X. If I hit the left arrow key, it moves in negative X. Now, on certain programs that you write, you may need to use uh, what's called incremental jogging. Incremental jogging allows for pushing the arrow key one time and having the torch move a defined amount of uh, distance. So in order to do that in mock, you'll select tab, and then on this jog mode button, uh, you'll click it so that the step box is highlighted in yellow. Now what happens is if I, hit, if I were to hit the right arrow key to, to jog the machine in the positive X direction, it would move exactly one inch as described by the cycle jog step box. And I'll do that now. So I'll, I'll jog the machine in the positive X, ax, positive X direction by clicking the right arrow key. As you can see, it moves exactly one inch. If I do the same in uh, the negative Y direction, it'll move negative uh, one inch in the Y direction. Now I can make this number anything that I want. For example, if I wanted to make it five inches, I would just simply uh, enter in five, hit enter, and then now if I jog uh, in the negative Y direction, it'll move five inches. Similarly, if I jog in the X direction, it moves five inches. The way that you control the speed at which it jogs when you're using the incremental uh, step jog mode is to hit tab, and then on feed rate, you click the box and type in whatever you want. For example, if I want to feed faster, I would enter, for example, 250. Now when I open tab back up, uh, and I hit the right or left arrow or right arrow key, it moves much faster. Now we're going to switch back to continuous jog mode, and we'll do that by hitting tab and then clicking the jog mode button until the continuous is highlighted in yellow. And then hit tab again to close that. Now we're back into the mode where we can hold the arrow keys down and jog the machine. Now you'll notice that when I, for example, hold the up arrow key, that the Y-axis digital readout is getting more positive. 
and then when I hold the down arrow key, the number gets more negative. Similarly, if I hold the right arrow key, the numbers get more positive. If I hold the left arrow key, they get more negative. These numbers are distances relative to wherever the coordinates uh, uh, origin were set previously. Now if I hit 0x and 0y, you'll notice that both of those numbers are now 0. What this represents is that the current location of my torch is now the origin. If I hit the up arrow key, for example, I've moved 4.27 inches in the y direction and 6.27 inches in the x direction. This is important because this is the approach that's needed to uh, set the origin for your cutting program. So on that topic, we'll go ahead and load our first program. So to do that, click Load G-Code and then select the Crossfire Break-In v1.0.tap file. This file is downloadable on our website on the Software Downloads page. So click it and hit Open. Now you notice that the two things, the program is now displayed in the uh, G-Code uh, uh, viewing box and it's also graphically shown in the graphics box on the right. A uh, couple of things. So we want to make sure that uh, when we run this program, the center of our torch is represented in the center of the screen. And to do that, we select Jog Follow. As you can see, the crosshairs is now in the center. And if I jog the machine, you can see that it moves relative to the path of the program, which is shown by this red line. Uh, now we need to set the offsets uh, for this particular machine, or this particular program. So I'm going to jog the torch until it's in this corner here. Now what this program is going to do is uh, it's going to move 23 inches in the y direction, 23 inches in the x direction, and then it's going to move back to the zero location and do that repeatedly. This is a break-in program, and what it does is it gets the machine running through the majority of its travel to get kind of things uh, running in and breaking in. So I'll move the torch to this location by jogging the machine there. Now I'm just going to get it close using the continuous jog mode. I have it within about an inch of its uh, maximum travel limit. Now I'm going to switch into uh, the step jog mode by hitting jog mode. And then I'm going to hit uh, select a, let's say a 30 thousandths uh, jog step and hit enter there. Now when I hit the arrow keys, it'll move in 30 thousandths increments. So I'm just going to inch up until the carriage bearings are roughly a quarter of an inch away from the stanchion plates. Then I'll move in the X direction until the aluminum carriage is roughly a quarter of an inch from the gantry bolt. So I look pretty good there. Now I'm going to zero out the X and Y coordinates by hitting 0x and 0y. As you can see in the graphics display, my torch is now at the beginning or at the start point for the program and I can go ahead and start this program. So I'll hit cycle start. Now before doing that, it, it's worth mentioning that anytime uh, you select cycle start, it's very important to make sure that there's no obstructions on the table that could cause a collision between the torch uh, and that obstruction. So Obviously, I have nothing on the machine, uh, so there's no fear there. Uh, you want to make sure that the torch slide is uh, proud of the slat surface so that it won't, it won't hit. Um, so I'm good, and I'm going to hit cycle start, and it'll start running. Now, if you look in the uh, graphics box, you can see as stated previously, the torch is represented by the crosshair and it's following the line, the red line shown. Similarly, in the uh, G-code window, it's stepping down through the program and the current line that it's executing is highlighted in white. Now, if I want to stop this program or just place a feed hold, if I intend to uh, continue cutting after I pause it, I would hit feed hold. 
as so. I can also do that by hitting the spacebar or as I just did by clicking the feed hold button. If I want to uh, start up the program again, I would hit cycle start and it'll, it'll continue running from its previous uh, pause point. Now if I want to, if it's in an emergency type situation and I need to stop the machine very quickly, I have two options. One is to hit the reset button or two is to hit the stop button. That stops all power to the drivers uh, immediately, so I'll do that now. As you can see, as soon as I hit the stop button, the machine stopped. Now to start this program up again, I need to rewind the G-code program, and I'll do that by clicking the rewind button, as so. Now I want to uh, put the uh, pro. I want to put the torch back to its zero location. As you can see, I'm at plus 16.6 in X and Y. So if I hit the go to zero button, it'll put the torch back to its zero location. I'll do that now. And I can go ahead and execute the program again. Now I'm gonna place a feed hold again, and I'm gonna reset it, which uh, starts the program back up to the top, similar to the, similarly to the what uh, Rewind does. And I'm going to demonstrate that the, any, that the program can be started uh, regardless of where the torch's position is. So if I jog it to an arbitrary position, such as out here, you can see that in the graphics display, I'm way off of uh, where the origin location is and I'm not on the toolpath at all. So when I hit uh, the start button, you'll see the torch move to the origin position and then begin executing the program. So I'll do that now. and I'll hit feed hold. Now since this is a break-in program, um, the, the purpose of it as stated is to, is to get things uh, moving well, so uh, we encourage you to run the program from start to finish, um, and so I'll do that now. That wraps up this tutorial video, and in the next video, we'll go over uh, putting the plasma cutter onto the machine, installing the torch into the torch slide, and then uh, setting offsets. Thanks for watching.